All right, we're getting some news now. Uh, just now, Ramalinga Raju, the Satyam board chairman, has just resigned for more. Let's just go across to our sister network, CNBC, to get more. 53,000 people. Satyam has established many things during this tenure. I sincerely ap ap apologize to all Satyamites and stakeholders who've made Satyam a special organization. I'm confident they stand by the company in this uh, hour of crisis. In light of the above, I appeal to the board to hold together to take some important steps. Mr. T.R. Prasad is well placed to mobilize support from the government at this crucial time. Under the circumstances, I am tendering my resignation as the chairman of Satyam and shall continue in this position only till such time as the new board is expanded. My continuance is just to ensure enhancement of the board. I am prepared now to subject myself to the laws of the land and face consequences thereof. Unquote. That's the end of Ramalinga Raju's very, very significant letter. I will just take the liberty of reading out page one of what I just read to you because you may have been too shocked to absorb what Ramalinga Raju has confessed in this one page. So I start quoting once again the important balance sheet disclosures with Ramalinga Raju made. He says, and I quote again, the balance sheet carries as of September 30th, 2008, inflated cash and bank balances of 5,000 crores and accrued interest of 376 crores, which is non-existent. An understated liability of 1,200 crores on account of funds ar arranged by me, Ramalinga Raju. An overstated debtor's position of 490 crores as against 2,650 crores reflected in the books. I go on to quote from him. For the September quarter, we reported a revenue of 2,600 crores and an operating margin of 649 crores as against actual revenues of 2,112 crores and an actual operating margin of 61 crores compared to 649 crores which was reported. This has resulted in artificial cash and bank balances going up to by 588 crores in Q2 alone. Lie 1, Lie 2, Lie 3, Lie 4 blatantly submitted to the stock exchanges, shared with investors, hidden from members of the Satyam board. The gap, I quote again, the gap in the balance sheet has arisen purely on account of inflated profits over a period of last several years, years, not quarters. What started as a marginal gap between actual operating profit and the one reflected in the books of accounts continued to grow over the years. It has attained unmanageable proportions as the size of the company's operations grew significantly. The differential in the real profits and the one reflected in the books was further accentuated by the fact that the company had to carry additional resources and assets to justify a higher level of operations, thereby significantly increasing the costs. Every attempt made to eliminate the gap failed. The promoters held a small percentage of equity. The concern was that the poor performance would result in a takeover. It was like riding a tiger, not knowing how to get off without being eaten. My last paragraph to you, quoting from this uh, press release or confession, whatever you want to call it, the aborted Meta's acquisition deal was the last attempt to fill the fictitious assets with real ones. Meta's investors were convinced that this is a good divestment opportunity and a strategic fit, an attempt to uh, cheat them once again. But once Satyam's problem was solved, it was hoped that Meta's payment can be delayed. But that was not to be, unquote. What you've just heard is an absolutely shocking confession from the promoter of Satyam Computers, admitting that all that has been reported over the last many quarters and years from Satyam Computers to the exchanges of this country were actually fraudulent and fictitious, cooked up by the promoter of the company. But this is far greater in scale than anything that they attempted to do with the Meta's deal, because at best you would have been accused of siphoning off or trying to siphon off 5,000 crores of cash, which never existed, now we hear from the company. The last quarter's numbers, which we did with a lot of hoopla and analyzing the micro margin of whether it slipped 50 basis points, was actually a figment of the Satyam promoter's imagination. There was never such a number. There was no operating margin. It was a 60 crore operating number, which was so shown as 660 crore operating profit. There were no revenues even compared, comparable to what was being disclosed for the last few days. Uh, and uh, the final submission that uh, Ramalinga Raju has made is that he subjected himself to the laws of the land and to face consequences. We hope for sure 
that the consequences are very, very stern because this really pales uh, any such previous corporate scam that we've seen in our country. I, in my memory, haven't seen a corporate scam from any large cap index stock of this magnitude where the promoter has come out and confessed that all that we've heard of the last many years is a complete fabrication and a lie. Uh, I'm not surprised that the stock is down 28%. I'm surprised that transactions are happening in Satyam today because the guy who's buying at 128 is ascribing a value to Satyam, knowing fully well that the basis of any kind of valuation for Satyam may be completely fraudulent and fictitious, and the cash which he thinks is on the books ha does not exist today, as the promoter has just told you. So it, the mind boggles on what this company is capable of and what it has done over the last many years. This is absolutely shocking, and I take my words back uh, when I was asked a few minutes back that this is the best thing for the Satyam shareholder. The resignation may be, but the confession has just blown a complete lid on one of the biggest scams that have played out in Indian corporate, corporate history maybe over the last many years.